This video is proudly sponsored by Husk Knives. Get 70% off your next Husk Knife purchase before the offer runs out. On YouTube fam, Mike here, shooting another high adventure video. I just gave you guys the finger of high adventure. Welcome to where we're gonna be spending the next, well, 24 hours approximately. This is my Express DBX. Uh, well, it was a hunting boat until we turned it into a fishing boat. 16 feet of welded beautifulness. You know, almost about this time last year, my very first video, I caught some slab crappy under that little bridge right over there. I'm tempted to start the day over there, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try a new spot first. We'll come back, give that a try for sure, but we're gonna head, well, what would this be? Up river, up the lake a little bit. Gonna go fish an island that I saw on a map. It's got, it seems like a nice little channel running through it. So we're gonna go fish some deep water first on this glorious afternoon. So I guess let's just go ahead and fire up the motor. Oh, well, let's get the day started. Gotta have the running goggles on. Keeps the cold out of your face and the bugs. Oh yeah, listen to that motor purr. Let's go. Boom, found the channel. All right, let's drop the anchor here. Here we go. All right, guys, to start our 24 hours here on the lake, we have locked anchor the trolling motor, and I've got a little double rig tipped with a couple of toughies here, and we're in about 45 feet of water. This is the channel. Got an island out here. Got the mainland right there, and we're just going to drop these toughies down to the bottom, and we're going to see if we can get any white perch, maybe even some striper. I don't know, just whatever might bite. Marking a few things on the bottom, could be bait, schools of bait fish, could be our perch that we're after. I don't know. If it's bait fish, that's a good sign because that means there should be some striper potentially in the area. So what we'll also do is we'll probably drop a striper rod down as well. Let's see if we can't maybe get us a little striper action. Got our striper rod here, and we're just gonna do what we did last time. Just drop a little shiner down. There you go, just like that. Little shiner. Hook and bead right there. And then I've got about three feet between said hook and bead and the bait. So it gives them a little bit of range of motion to swim around. So just drop that right over the side. Get it all the way down to the bottom. Give it a few reels up. Keep it maybe about five, six feet off the bottom. Who knows, maybe it'd be a bit hungry catfish down there. I don't know. That's the, kind of the fun thing about dropping live bait down in deep channels. You, know, you never know what you could get. Oh, something's down there. See a little arch? That'd be right about where my toughie is. And now, a brief word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, Husk Knives are the ultimate outdoor camping knife. Made from high quality Japanese stainless steel, this knife features a hygienic, rustic style handle and a 38 degree blade edge that ensures extreme sharpness. The curved blade with a grip hole enables better precision and handling to make chopping and cutting actions easy. Each Japanese knife is light, durable, and sturdy, and this particular knife is only 28 centimeters in length and weighs only 252 grams, which increases comfort and control and reduces the potential for accidents. Currently, for all my viewers, Husk is running a 70% discount on their authentic Japanese knives. You can test the Husk knife with a 30-day money-back guarantee. This deal won't last for long, so make sure to check it out by clicking on my special link in the video description and pinned comment below. And try your authentic Japanese Husk knife today. Well, this is a bite. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. This is on the striper rod. Look at that. Oh, we got a striper come up and hit it. Oh, look at that. Woo! Oh, my word. On, I saw it on the graph, guys. I saw some streaks on the graph. 
and all of a sudden just hammered that shiner. What do we got? Oh, it's a nice little one here. Nothing life changing. Come here, you. It's not big enough to keep, but it's the first fish of the trip. Come here, you. Ah, there we go. Nice. First little striper. Haven't been able to find the perch. We got a striper. Was he gonna go 17? Right there. Yeah, it's like exactly 17. Well, yeah, 17 and a half. They've got to be 21 inches this time of year. So he'll have to go back into water, but it's a nice fish. That was awesome. I saw something on the graph and it started to swing upwards and all of a sudden, bam, nailed that fish. Getting dropper back in the water. Oh, she's plenty spunky, that's for sure. Woo, there we go. All right. Ooh, there's another big streak down there. Got to watch out for our bait. Definitely striper cruising through the area. Trying to find some white perch though. There's one. Got him. Got him. Hey, finally. Oh my gosh. They're way down there. Feels like a pretty solid fish too. Look at that. Oh my word, guys. I was just about re getting ready to leave. We caught that one striper, but I haven't really been seeing any. Oh, big perch. Oh, big perch. Oh my goodness. Snet time. Whoa. I haven't been seeing any perch on the on the sonar. Yeah! Oh my word, that's a tubby! Look at that! Oh man! That is a big ol' honker! Ooh! That's a big tubby! That's a piggy perch right there! Let's see, let's see how far he goes. Oh yeah, that's 12, 12 and a half. That's a 12 and a half inch perch! That's what I'm talking about to start the day. Oh, check it out guys, look at this. This is what I'm seeing. Look at that right there. You see that right down there on the bottom? There was a perch right there. There was a perch. I was looking for schools of them, and we were actually getting ready to leave. I just caught the one striper, and it's we've been here for about an hour, hour and a half, and I was getting ready to pull up, and we finally got this guy moving through. Looks like there might be a few more moving through the area. We adjusted our depth, about 39 feet, went up about six, seven feet. Just kind of been moving around the area. Crush this one, that's a nice white perch. Nice white perch, let's get them on a stringer. Dip into our box here. There you go, oh, got a couple of them. Just got these jigs and I'm just tipping it with the toughy. Hook right through the lips. There we go. Drop it back down, all right, get down there. Not gonna lie, that bite kind of took me by surprise. I've been sitting here jigging for like an hour and just nothing. And I've been waiting to see kind of a school of a move through on the graph and I just haven't seen anything. And all of a sudden, oh, there's a bite right there. Oh yeah, I see fish down there. Oh wait, there's some big fish down there too. There's a, a couple striper moving through the area. Check that out, you see that? See that big old streak? Two streaks. Better keep an eye on that rod tip. Because they heading down for that bait. Look at that. There was a striper right there. Let's wait and see if we get one. Maybe, maybe we'll hook up. Oh, there's a bite. Got him. Got him. Another one. Another one. Doesn't feel as big. We got another perch. I'm assuming. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's not a bad perch still. That's not a bad perch. Oh, oh, no, no, no. 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 Oh, dang it. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Oh, so close to victory. Ah, dang it. Give me another toffee. I'm going to go ahead and rig this other rod up here. Now, this is just a double rig. It's got a sinker at the end, a couple of golden J hooks. We're just going to rig these up. I'm, I'm jigging with that one. And it's tipped with toughies. This one, I'm gonna just put some toughies on each one and call it good. It's on the bottom right there. Reel it up. Boom, I'm gonna set it right there. Hopefully bring some perch in. Oh, there it is, there's a bite. Bite on the live bait. Bite on the live bait. Got him, got him. Yes, there we go. Live bait. Got us hooked up. What do we got? Yep, white perch. I don't know why I swung them aboard again after I lost the last one, but hey, it worked. Nice, nice. Not as big as the last one, but you know, that might even be a little catfish bait later on. Let's see how big that is here. He's gonna go. That's not a bad fish. That's nine inches, a little nine inch white perch. Let's get him on the stringer here. Like I said, this might be a good catfish bait later on here at the very least. But we'll pop them on the stringer for now. All right, let's get some more bait out there. 
All right, guys, we've caught a few more fish. I kept another small uh, white perch, but just not a ton of success around here, but I've been seeing a lot of fish moving through. So maybe there's a bite window. I don't know if you guys see behind me, looks like it's gonna be a full moon tonight. So I've been marking fish. We caught the one striper and I'm seeing more striper down here as well as the white perch. So I just figured we're gonna go ahead and camp right here. I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous evening out. So I have cleared the deck put all the stuff that I want, uh, that I want to be able to access kind of towards the bow of the boat. We're going to go ahead and get this tent set up and while well, we still got light, unlike last time and kind of go ahead and hunker down here. So let's go ahead and get the tent set up before we lose light. Maybe make a little supper as well. <laughs> Welcome to the honeymoon suite for one. Uh, we're gonna blow up our air mattress here. Where's that at? I'm anxious to get the fishing lines back out. The sun has just gone down. Got a little portable power station, which comes in handy. Got a nice sheet for the bed because we're not animals. We're civilized for heaven's sake. Come equipped with our Whatever that's called. What's that called? A sleeping bag. There it is. And luxury pillow. Additional blanket. Because it's going to be cold. Ugh. We also have our heater. Oh, plus lamp. We'll hang up here. Whoa, ho, boat went by. There are waves hitting us. Okay. Anyway, got the Mr. Buddy heater. Two propane tanks. I'll have the heater on low. We'll give us about 12 hours of heat. So plenty for getting us through the cold stretch of the night, I'm thinking. We'll set him up just like that. Set our propane right. We also have our Kitty Nighthawk carbon monoxide detector. That way we don't give up the ghost. There we go. The Mr. Buddy heater will kick off automatically if it's not getting good uh, circulation, not getting enough oxygen. But this is just our backup because, I don't know, it just makes me sleep a little better at night. That way, knowing that uh, I'll wake up in the morning. Here we go, guys. All set up. Got, we're going to have a striper rod there. We've also got a rod with a couple minnows that we're going to drop down to the bottom for our perch. Sitting in like 34 feet of water right now. Here we go. Check it out. We are all set up, ready to go. Got the little heater ready. We're definitely gonna need that tonight. It's supposed to be like 30 degrees. Nice twin size bed. We're all set up, got my running lights on. Got the little light on in the back, right back there. Got our bow light on as well. Oh man, look at that full moon. Maybe the striper will be feeding tonight. Maybe we'll get in on some nighttime fish. But oh, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is so cool. I, I can literally pick wherever I want to camp. Now I am limited a little bit by my anchors. I only have 50 foot long ropes right now, which pretty much is going to be anywhere I want to camp. I'm not going to be camping in terribly deep water, but I mean, I can, I can go buy hundred foot rope if I want camp in even deeper water. Maybe we'll do that. Like in the summertime when those striper move down to like 90 feet, maybe we'll just get like hundred foot ropes and anchor up in like a hundred feet of water. That'd actually be pretty cool. Now that I'm thinking about it, but seriously, like I have no neighbors. I don't have to worry about, you know, people keeping their music on till midnight. Don't have to worry about drunk people hanging out around me. Like I am literally all set up. Now, the other thing I do have is on each of these poles here, we'll get it set up, but I've got big floodlights. So between the whole lights and either the lights at either end, like I'm pretty well lit up and anybody who's on the water is going to be able to see me. Plus this time of year though, they're just not a lot of people still on the water. It's middle of February. This is so cool. I have a 360 view, unlike any campsite that you can get. It's pretty much free. I mean, I didn't have to pay for this site, minus just the gas to get out here. Oh, this is so cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and get our grill set up and fillet this white perch here. Get a little supper going. I also brought some chili with me. I think we might cook that up as well. Man, it's fun getting these big ones. Look at that. Getting big old nice fillets off of them. That's just awesome. Cut the ribs out and we're in business. Actually, you know what? If I want a catfish tonight, let's throw the ribs that way. Could throw a catfish line out. Start kind of chumming for them. 
All right, got some oil heating up in the skillet. Got our fresh white perch fillets. I'll just go ahead and just drop those in like that. Crack some fresh salt over them. Now I've got some of this Mojo Citrus Blend. Thought we'd sprinkle over it for fun. And then I had a subscriber send me this Everglades Heat Seasoning. Now, I forgot who sent me the Everglades Heat. So comment below who you are and I wanna shout you out. So I appreciate you. I don't have the packaging it came in. I think I was cleaning up my office and accidentally threw it away. I usually am really good at keeping all that stuff so I can give people their proper shout outs for sending me stuff. And I always appreciate it. If you guys wanna send me anything, I have in the description of the video, of all my videos actually, there's a PO box. So if you ever wanna send me something to like try or whatever, just give me a heads up that it's coming. And I have people send me a lot of stuff and it's really fun. I like to try to use it in my videos and I usually do a pretty good job of using most everything, but there we go, there's our fish. Haven't had any action that I can see anyway so far on either rod. I do have the depth finder on up front with the trolling motor. See if I see anything passing through, but nothing as of right now. Keep an eye on it though. Pretty soon I'll have to put bells on when I go in. There we go, look at that. Mmm, seasoned on both sides. Set that off to the side, let it cool down a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Oh man. I can smell the citrus seasoning already. Mmm, like I taste it too. We're getting a little bit of that Everglades heat. Oh, that's tasty. And I'm liking that heat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Look at that piece right there. There you go. Beautifully crisped, little blackened on it. Oh man. Yeah, guys. This is living right here. Mm. Check out round two. We got some Campbell's Chunky Chili Mac. We've cleaned our skillet out to the best of our ability. And of course, we gotta finish off the chili with some original Fritos. Ooh, I feel that chill really starting to set in in the air right now. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, that's hot, that's hot. Need a cloth here. Got some fresh mac and chili Fritos on top for, the, I guess, the main course. I guess you could say fish was the entree. Delicious chili mac and cheese with subtle hints of the fish I cooked in it beforehand. Hoping to hear a bell go off at some point. We'll just leave the lines out all night. Another bonus for sleeping out uh, on the water is you get to fish all night. I just zipped up the tent flap. We are now snug inside, but getting ready to be even more snug once we get a little heat going here. Always a little nervous when it doesn't start right away. Ah, it's gonna be a long night if we don't have the heater. Ooh, there we go with some blue flame. Uh, there we go like I said this little buddy heater I'll just keep it on low and quite honestly a lot of the heat like when I stand up in the tent from about chest high I can really feel the warmth uh, but uh, a lot of the heat does stay in the tent and I don't need to keep it I don't need to keep it very um 
very high. In fact, I just keep it on low and I get the most out of it that way. Like I said, I get like five and a half, six hours of runtime out of just one of these. And I've got, well, I've got basically like two and a half. So we've got 10, 15 hours of runtime easily. It's already about 9.30 in the evening. So as long as we get to make it till about sunrise is like 7.15. So we can make it for the next 10 hours. We'll be okay and we should we should be fine well guys i am calling it a night however the breeze has started to pick up a little bit which is one of the things i've kind of wondered about and i haven't run into yet of course it's only the second time i've done this but uh the tent on the boat is basically just like a big sail so um hopefully the two 20 pound anchors will hold us um we're gonna go ahead and call it a night and hope we wake up in the morning in the same spot we anchored otherwise uh i don't know where we could drift to so hopefully everything holds and uh we're just staying put for the night so anyway gonna hunker down for whew, a bit of a breezy and chilly night so i'll catch you guys in the morning uh. oh Good morning, YouTube fam. Oh. oh my goodness. Well, it was breezy all night. And there were some points that I wasn't sure if the anchors held. Actually, now that I think about it, we better check if the anchors held. Whew. Pretty bumpy night. It was supposed to be like three, four mile an hour winds, but it was probably like eight to ten mile an hour winds all night, literally. Still got the heater going. So it feels pretty good in here. Ugh. Oh boy. Let's make sure we're still in the same spot here. Oh uh, yeah, it looks like it. Whew. Ooh, that wind is a little bit nippy, not gonna lie. Beautiful morning though. We've moved a little bit. The point of that island, we were like over this way. We've drifted some, I would say. Oh, whew, let's close that door. I don't want to get out. It's cold out there. Maybe what we should do is, since it's pretty breezy out here, kind of on the main lake, there is a bridge maybe about two miles that way that's gonna be a cold run it's gonna be a really cold run but i haven't been there in a couple of months try some crappy fishing and then maybe we could do some more like perch fishing striper fishing on the way up let's throw all our warm weather gear on and tear everything down take a little run down the lake all right guys and here we go got our boat back takes me about 20 minutes to get everything torn down and to kind of put back to the way I had it. So not too shabby, probably shorter than if I were at a regular campsite just because everything's just like right in this location, I'm not so spread out. So let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Sweet. Let's go take a run down the lake, see if we can find some crappy this morning. All right, we are here. Beautiful morning as always. There we go. Oh, it's going to warm up fast today. It's supposed to be close to 70 today. There he is. Got him. Got him. There's a cloud of them down there. There we go. Yes, guys. <laughs> nice. Come on. Flip him aboard. Flip him aboard. There we go. Awesome. Oh, there you go. Just popped off. Nice. Not a bad fish right there. Oh, there we go. First one of the morning. I came over to this pillar. There's a cloud of them down there. I'm going to show you guys here what I'm looking at. It's probably a nice like 10, 10 and a half incher. Not shabby at all. Check this out, guys. Look at that. Look at that. We've got a couple of the pillars are right there, but look at all that crappy. That's all just a big old cloud of crappy right along those pillars right back there. I was just going through it and I was like, man, something's got to jump on the hook. And he finally did. So let's get this guy turned around here. 
Now let's go go back through that school, see if anybody else is hungry. There's a little little bump right there. There he is. Boom. Nailed him. <laughs> Boy, he just jumped on. And I was like, nope. Feels like a solid fish. Look at this. Look at this little dude running. Good grief. Oh, he's, I don't think he's hooked very well. Come on. There we go. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Look at that. He chose the sartreuse about another 10 inch or no no big slabby but you never know there might be some down there just another nice little crappy nice little late winter crappy let's put him on the stringer sweet there we go look at that guys a couple nice little fish there it was interesting i started the morning over there in the pillars and I didn't see anything on the graph, so I quickly zipped over here. And it's crazy, there's like nothing next to nothing over there. Come over here, and they're just stacked up right on this, right on this set of pillars right here. There he is, got him, right down there by that pillar. <laughs> just edged a little closer. That was deep, that was real deep. Oh, barely hooked, barely hooked. Nice. Not terribly large, but probably about nine inches. There you go. We'll measure him up right here. He is, oh no, he's a little over 10. He's a little over 10, nice. Awesome. Another one for the morning. If that guy's 10, these guys are probably about 11 down here then. Here we go. Good looking stringer we're putting together this morning. <laughs> this is awesome. Guys, I'm getting them on this little double rig, which is, that guy actually hit, it's like a, the clear one, which is some black fleck in it. Just got a double rig on with some white jig heads and orange eyes. Got the sartreuse and the white right there. Just dropping that down and they're just loading on. There he is. There. Loaded on. Just right off of the right off of the jig. Just bapped it. There's a little bit better one. There we go. Preferred the sartreuse. There it is. Nice. Oh man, another one on the sartreuse right in the top of the mouth. Can't hesitate. You gotta be waiting. You gotta be watching. And as soon as you feel that boop, feel that tap, it's so light this time of year. You gotta be able to plug them fast. You'll go on the stringer. There we go, look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. Nice looking stringer for the morning. Take a look at what we're fishing, guys. Look at that, that all right there, that is, that's crappy. All of that's crappy right at the tip of this bridge. <laughs> that is a cloud of crappy right there and it extends all through those pilings up there. That's what we're fishing on right now. Check that out. <laughs> he just smoked that. That's called catfish bait right there. Just drop him back in. Another nice one. There we go. Check that out. Another nice crappy. Got that sartreuse. That's our sartreuse. I think we've done like, I think we caught six. It's like five to one sartreuse to the white. But another nice one. Let's see how big he is. I'm going to tell you guys. He is ten and a half. Ten and a half inch crappy right there. Now we're putting in some work this morning. This is awesome. They're down there, bites kind of slow, but we're putting together a nice stringer. All right guys, decided to cook up some breakfast. 
after a successful morning of crappy fishing, I do have this double rig out still. I uh, got a couple of toughy minnows on it, so we'll see if we get anything on that. But figured it's about time to start cooking up some breakfast. So, okay. yeah. Got some fresh McCafe blend here. Check that out, guys. Coffee's almost ready. Nice fresh breakfast this morning. Doesn't get much better than this. Mm, look at that bacon. Perfection. Ooh, fresh McCafe. Right out here on the lake? Yes, please. Oh yeah, that's good. All right, guys, we're currently sitting in 54 feet. Ooh, look at that, look at that. See, there's a bunch of bait right there. I guarantee you, I'll bet you that was a striper right there. Bet your money on it. Anyway, we just picked a spot on the map. We'll see how it goes. See if we get anything. I don't know, I've never fished this spot before, so. Oh, we're getting a bite on the live bait, live bait. Got him, got him on the live. Yes, this is that double rig. Sweet, come on. Pull him out of the depths. Oh yeah, it's a decent one. I don't know why I'm netting him. Just pull him aboard, you goober. <laughs> there we go. Not the biggest piggy in the world. Let's see what she gonna measure at. What's she gonna measure at? Oh yeah. A little over 10, 10 and a quarter on that live bait. There he is. Yeah, just float it on. <laughs> there we go. Number two. pretty good on the thumb there. Bobby, they got spines on the top. They got serrates on the side of the gills right there. They've got spines on these bottom fins. I think I got got got. I don't know where I got got, but whew, it's a bloodbath on the boat now, but it's a nice fish. Well, YouTube fam, I think that's gonna call it a day for us. The wind is starting to really pick up. I actually had to drive to the back of this cove because out in that big water especially in this flat bottom boat and it's just that those waves are starting to get pretty brutal but there you go look at that we got a nice mixture got some white perch got some crappy on there we're gonna take all those home fillet them up have a nice fish fry well thank you guys for hanging out with me on the boat for the last 24 hours it's always fun trying out new spots kind of just getting to know this lake a little bit better the lake is so massive like it takes years to just kind of get it down but we're slowly getting there hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks so much for hanging out with me and as always i will see you in the next one